Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Wednesday, November 8th, and today we are continuing to talk about the tactics that Satan uses to draw us away from Christ and get us into that mode of um, moving more and more towards sin. Now, today what we're talking about is it's kind of two things in one. Now, on the surface, we're talking about divisions of the church. In, within the church. But then when we start to dive in more deeply, and the more I did research on this, the more I discovered that those divisions in the church are happening as a part of pride. It's a lack of humility. It's people looking down on each other. And it's so closely tied to that spirit of religion that we talked about yesterday. So today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 31. And I'm not going to read all of this to you. I'm going to trust that you're going to read this on your own. But there's some things that I really wanted to pull out. Now, first of all, Paul says there should be no divisions among the church. The gospel is the gospel is the gospel. But we intellectualize and we start to get deep into theology, which is a wonderful thing if we're using good resources and we're drawing conclusions that are biblical, that are aligned with what the Bible says. Theology has its place. I love theology. I am definitely a theology nerd. However, <clears throat> we cannot get overly focused on our pursuit of that understanding and lose the focus of our relationship with Jesus Christ. That relationship with Jesus Christ is very important. So when we get to verse set, uh, verse 12, it says, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Now, initially, when I first read this, my first thought was, well, if they're following Christ, great. The people that are following Christ are in the right. But it depends on their heart attitude. It's all about what's happening within that um, our attitude and the way we're looking at others. If you are saying, oh, I follow Christ and looking down on others and not approaching that with humbleness and humility, then you could be causing division within the church because now there's all these intellectualized people and there's the people that are the new believers that don't feel like they can keep up and they feel like they're being pushed down by these smart, super smart, super spiritual people. That's a spirit of religion. That's how another way that that spirit of religion sneaks in. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so within this passage, Paul is hitting three dominant issues. And I got this information from the Apologetic Study Bible. First of all, He's recognizing, he's referencing the fact that the church is sanctified through the relationship with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you've been a believer, a pastor, or gone to seminary, gone to Bible college. It doesn't matter that you've done all that. What matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's the same for the new believer. What matters is their relationship with Jesus Christ. And that what, that's what makes them so powerful and such a force to be reckoned with. Third, secondly, he thanks God for their gifts of speech and knowledge. He's thankful that they're thinking it through. He's thankful that they're having these discussions. But it, what the problem is, is it's causing division. Then he rebukes the division, both among them and against him introduced and he introduced a theme repeated throughout the letter the items mentioned desensitized um, being desensitized in sexual matters preoccupation with the gifts of knowing and speaking and remaining focused on their favored leaders were symptoms of a deep illness within that corinthian church then he goes into <clears throat> that Christ has the wisdom and the power of God. We've got to remember that everything we can understand, everything we've experienced in our relationship with Christ is to God's credit, not our credit. Don't let your pride steal part of your relationship with Jesus Christ. 
And, you know, humility is such a conundrum. I was talking to a friend about this this morning. You know, you, you strive and you strive and you strive to have humility. And as soon as you say, oh, I've got humility, pride is sneaking in because now you're, you're getting prideful about the fact that you have humility. You want to put others first. You got to make sure that you're not staying self-absorbed. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.